Super Mario 64, the iconic launch title for the Nintendo 64. The game would prove once again that Nintendo and their appointed mascot were both at the forefront of cutting edge gaming. This 3D platformer whereby the famous plumber explores different worlds collecting stars functioned as the blueprint for many 3D platforming games to come. Many people who owned the Nintendo 64 back in the day dreamed of a time whereby Nintendo would release a sequel on the hardware. And while there were many reports that a game was on the way, sadly, a Mario 64 2 would never actually surface. Or has it? The game we should be focusing on today is, in many ways, as close to what we could possibly wish for. I am Lady Decade and this is the story of Super Mario 64 Last Impact, a full sequel to the classic game. Yes, before any of you nerds start crying and accusing me of misleading you, Nintendo has never released a Mario 64 2. That should go without saying, really, and you shouldn't need me to tell you that. But in the fantastic world we live in, when a large corporate company like Nintendo tend to drop the ball, the brilliant citizens of the internet stand up to produce the games we have always dreamed of. You could say the ROM hacking community does what Nintendo don't. And, well, the hack I am spotlighting today is one of the most impressive in existence. Super Mario 64 Last Impact isn't any regular ROM hack. It is essentially an entirely new game made in the same engine, featuring 15 new full-size stages, several new smaller stages, 12 brand new power-ups and a whopping 130 new stars to collect. This game is even larger than the original. Who was the lunatic who headed this ridiculous project? Well, the Kazi Emanuel, of course. An individual we have spotlighted many times in the past on this channel for bringing us Waluigi's Taco Stand, Super Mario Odyssey 64 and The Legend of Zelda The Missing Link. Three highly impressive fan projects that are just as fun to play as some of the best official releases for Nintendo 64 hardware. The hack that saw release on the 30th of September 2016 was and is the most extensive of its kind to date, literally functioning as an unofficial full-blown sequel to one of the most important video games of all time. Pre-release, when questioned about his game by a YouTube user, Kazi would reply, I want to get a good balance between difficulty and exploration factor. I want the player to be able to beat the game with a low amount of struggle, but I also want to make the player work hard to get all stars there are. In conclusion, the difficulty curve is about as steep as in Mario 64. It starts a bit higher and oscillates more though. So pretty much what anyone would want from more Mario 64 content. Everything about this game is new and fresh, yet familiar and nostalgic, with even the file select screen being completely overhauled to an area wherein Mario can walk around and go through a door to select the right file. Princess Peach is also located here and instantly discloses some of the new features that this game has. This includes the fact that Lakitu does not follow Mario around filming him in this adventure, and now the R button can be used in the game to centre the camera behind the player, and the D-pad can be used to control the camera horizon. She also outlines that many stars have their own cutscenes that give hints on where stars are hidden, much like in Mario Sunshine. And now Mario has a separate air meter, which is separate from his life bar for use when swimming underwater. This is a series of small changes to improve the dated gameplay, which can be found in the original Mario 64. Good stuff. 
The true adventure begins outside of the princess's castle, with a cutscene being shown of the princess and Toad standing beneath a bandstand. The duo promptly gets surrounded by two hostile piranha plants, who Mario must promptly take out and defeat. An instant cool feature of this fight is that the music is a remix of the sub-boss theme from the Ocarina of Time, adding a double layer of a Nintendo 64 nostalgia to this exciting affair. After the fight, the princess warns Mario that she senses there is more danger coming from the moon, so orders him to go and search for the power stars. The moment players head to the first stage, a wildlife valley. The star select screen has a remix of the player select screen from Mario Bros 2. And the search for the first star is labelled Touch Fuzzy Get Dizzy, a warning and a name of a stage from Yoshi's Island. It's these constant callbacks that will have you smiling from ear to ear throughout playing this game. As you begin to platform through this level, you will notice that the stage contains yet another Nintendo 64 sounding remix of an iconic track from the Mario series, and the search for the first star is faithful to the challenge's name, in that Mario must traverse platforms avoiding touching fuzzies to safely grab the power star. Obviously, it also goes without saying that fuzzies did not appear in Mario 64 previously, so have been custom made for this amazing hack. This game is insanely well made! Obviously, this is a huge game with 130 power stars to collect, so I'm not going to cover the collection of every single one or even dream of discussing with you everything that this one has to offer. After all, it would probably be best for you to explore this one for yourself anyway. So let's cover the game's plot and some of the other awesome elements that were implemented into this dream game. After Princess Peach's warning of danger coming from the moon, Mario sets out in search of stars on a quest to collect as many as possible in line with the original Mario 64. This eventually leads Mario to a confrontation with Bowser, who must be overcome and defeated. With this battle over though, there is still concern over the moon, so the search for stars persists, with the next objective being getting into the mysterious Shadow Factory. Eventually, it transpires that an all new villain is behind the kingdom's issues, a twisted and cruel foe known as Roche. While the game does not make his motives for causing chaos completely clear, it does become apparent that this evil entity likes to watch others suffer, and even goes as far at one point in the game to force Princess Peach to watch as he tries to kill Mario. See now this is a real Mario villain, none of this overtrodden Mario vs Bowser crap. Honestly though, I think that this is a breath of fresh air, as there was a time in the past that we used to get different Mario villains. Remember what? Remember Wario? Remember Tatanga? Pepperidge Farm remembers. They should bring more new villains into the Mario fold, it certainly made these adversaries more intimidating than Bowser has ever been. So we already briefly touched on Wildlife Valley, where Fuzzies and other Yoshi's Island throwback enemies such as Tap Taps reside, but what about the other areas in the game? As I said, it's impossible to discuss everything, but as players move on to the second area known as Stone Snake Shatters, there are still plenty more surprises and easter eggs in store. This area insanely lets you use Flood as a power-up from Super Mario Sunshine, but the music used for this stage is a Mario 64 sounding rendition of the Temple of the Ancients theme from Final Fantasy VII. As you know, I love Final Fantasy VII, who doesn't? So this was a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. The game also contains Sunset Islet, 
An island with a lighthouse where Mario gets to use a fire flower. Crystal caves, an immense cave system where Mario gets to use Super Mario Bros. Frog Power Up. Abandoned Outpost, a stage that introduces a variety of debuting enemies. Super Sweet Sugarland, which looks every bit as delicious as it sounds and so many more stages. As I said, there is just so much in this one that I hope that the footage that you're looking at does some of the talking for me, as this is a game that could be broken down for hours and hours. Other power-ups that are new to Mario 64, which I am yet to mention, include the ability to ride Yoshi, Cloud Mario, who can create cloud platforms, ice flowers, which can be used to shoot ice balls, bee mushrooms to give Mario bee powers, like in Mario Galaxy, the spring mushroom to make Mario control like a spring, and also rainbow stars to make Mario invincible, and even some quirky power-ups. Some weird and cool ones, for example, include the spider mushroom that allows Mario to spawn a climbing string or gain a shield in the final boss battle. But perhaps my favourite of all though is the paper mushroom. Now this makes Mario paper thin, allowing him to pass through bars and grates. So amazing to see Paper Mario get a nod in a more traditional 3D platforming game. The fan hacking community are awesome. So as I have said in this video several times now I think, this project is massive and I barely scratched the surface about all of the coolness that this one contains. This is literally a full blown sequel to Mario 64 which is even larger in scope than the original. You know, it's a massive shame that Nintendo themselves have such a negative attitude towards these games because could you imagine how much money they would make if they just made a deal with the community and released this game on the Switch in an official capacity? This game would print money, so the company are severely, severely missing a trick here. But for now, I would advise you to seek this out and play it for yourself. As after all, what else are you going to do? Wait for Nintendo to make one? So I am Lady Decade and that was Mario 64 Last Impact. Well, if you enjoyed this content, then like, subscribe, hit the notification bell and everything that everyone always asks you to do at the end of their video. But at the end of mine, I like to answer questions from my patrons. So today's question is from J O'Malley and they ask, were you confused the first time you used an original N64 controller? Well, J, of course I wasn't confused at all by this. I mean, it, how could you be? It's literally just a controller designed to be used by two people at the same time. So, obviously, when I used this, I would sometimes hold this one and this one, and then someone else would hold this one for me and press the buttons. Or, if I was feeling adventurous and was doing this on my own, then everyone knows that the best way to hold these is like this. And you use your chin, like that to play Bibio Bames. Well, see you in the next video. Bye.